The movie is set in a small, isolated American town named Perfection, which is surrounded by mountains and cliffs on three sides and connected to the rest of the country by a single narrow road. We are then introduced to the protagonists, two friends, Valentine Val McKee and Earl Bassett, who are among the few residents of Perfection. They are known for being the handymen of the town as they engage in odd jobs like watching cattle for farmers, draining sewage, laying pipe if you're Kevin Bacon, and disposing of garbage. Earl is more mature, older, and likes to plan things ahead, while Val is more spontaneous in nature and likes to live in the moment. Whenever the two men reach an impasse, they resolve it like grown adult men by playing rock, paper, scissors. On the way to their next gig, they notice an unfamiliar person with lots of equipment on the side of the road. It turns out to be a female student from a nearby university working on her project, a hot-blooded Val Val gets excited after seeing the girl and rashly drives towards her, but when they reach her, his expectations aren't met, causing him to be disappointed. The girl then introduces herself as Rhonda Lebec, a seismology student. She asks them about drilling and blasting activities around the town, as her seismograph has been picking up strange readings. Sorry, says Kevin, that was me. However, the men appear to be unaware, and they soon depart. Elsewhere, Rhonda sets up her equipment to collect readings of the area. Unbeknownst to her, something huge starts crawling beneath the ground and moves towards her. It almost manages to catch her, but Rhonda gets into her vehicle in the nick of time and drives away. On the other hand, the two men finish disposing of the garbage and stop for a drink. Val takes pride in their ability of taking care of the garbage like no other, but then laments on being forced to do such menial jobs. He says that they have to set their bars a little higher. They do just that by going to a teenager named Melvin's house for their sewage removal gig, but they find the job difficult and start blaming each other. Their argument is is eventually interrupted when the sewage pipe bursts open and they get showered in nasty sewage. Finally fed up, Earl and Val pack their stuff and leave perfection for good. Along the way, they are stopped by Nancy, who runs a pottery business and lives with her daughter Mindy. Nancy offers the two guys a month-long gig with free lunch and beer, but having resolved to leave the town for good, they decline the offer. On their way out of town, they notice a man on a transmission tower. Upon closer inspection, Val identifies the man as the town's drunkard, Edgar. Seeing him immobile and unresponsive, they decide to get him down. The two play a game of rock, paper, scissors as usual, and Val is chosen for the mission. He then slowly goes up and reaches Edgar, only to find him dead and a rifle in his hands. Following this, the duo takes his body to the local doctor, Jim, who lives out in a trailer. The latter examines the body and assumes that Edgar must have stayed on the tower for three or four days and died of dehydration. Puzzled by the revelation, Earl and Val wonder what Edgar must have been so afraid of that he preferred dying up there to getting down. Nevertheless, they continue on their journey, but are again forced to stop when they notice sheeps of a local farmer butchered. Worried, they look for him and soon find his severed head under his hat. When I was a child, I walked in on my dad watching this movie, and that scene gave me the worst nightmares I've ever had. This freaks out the duo, and they decide to flee the town ASAP, but to their dismay, the only road leading out of the town has been blocked by a small landslide, presuming it was caused by the road workers. They call out for them, but only find their helmets lying on the ground, full of blood and slime. This frightens the two even more, and they immediately proceed to return back to town. While leaving, Val backs the truck into a small ridge and gets stuck, but after using its full power, he eventually manages to set the vehicle loose. When they finally reach the town, the residents learn about the strange occurrences and discover a long, snake-like creature wrapped around Val's truck's axle. It was perhaps why the vehicle got stuck in the first first place. One of the residents, Bert, then speculates that there might be more than one of these creatures in the area, so they must be really careful. He and his wife, Heather, are revealed to be survivalists who have stored a lot of weapons and ammunition in case anything goes wrong. At night, Jim and his wife, Megan, decide to rest after working non-stop to build their house. Just then, they notice a steam vent coming out from the ground. Megan appears to be worried, but Jim speculates that they may have discovered natural gas and goes to investigate. Out of nowhere, the ground beneath him gives way, and he is pulled inside by an unseen force. Megan desperately tries to dig him out, but a snake-like creature emerges and angrily hisses at her. <laughs> 
Terrified, she runs back to her car and locks herself in, but before she can drive away, the car itself starts to sink. Back at the town with the telephone services out and the road blocked, Val and Earl decide to set out on horses to bring help. On their way to the city, they pass through Jim's trailer. They look around for the doctor and his wife, but to no avail. Just then, they hear the sound of a radio coming from beneath the ground. Upon inspection, they learn that Jim's car has been buried vertically into the ground. The sight horrifies them, but they have no choice but to continue on their journey. After a while, the two reach the middle of the desert and the area looks to be safe, but suddenly their horses start acting up and throw them off. The mysterious creature then appears from underground and devours the horses. Pissed, Val brings out his gun and shoots at it, but this only enrages the beast. The two friends then run towards the rocky mountains and try to jump across a concrete ditch, but end up falling into it. Fortunately, the creature doesn't notice the concrete wall and slams against it killing itself. As they breathe a sigh of relief, Rhonda shows up out of nowhere. She inspects the creature and speculates that it must have been subterranean, as it doesn't have eyes. Val and Earl are intrigued by the finding, and they plan on selling the unique creature's corpse for money. But just then, Rhonda checks her seismographs and worryingly reveals that there are more of such creatures around here. Not long after, they feel the earth moving and realize that it's coming for them. The trio quickly gets out of the ditch and takes shelter above a huge rock, but the creature can't climb. They then wait for the monster to leave, but every time they set foot on the ground, it appears. And it wants those feet. Frustrated, Val wonders if the creature is listening to their conversation, since it can neither hear nor smell. Rhonda speculates that the creature senses seismic vibration and hears every move they make on the rock, as it is the perfect conductor. Left with no choice, the trio is forced to spend the night on the rock. In the morning, Rhonda comes up with an idea, and they pole vault their way to her truck. They then start the vehicle and quickly flee to perfection. In the next scene, the group reaches a department store where most of the town dwellers have gathered. They assert that they must abandon perfection as the creature is progressively moving towards them. Rhonda suggests that they hike to the nearest city through the mountains in the west. Those mountains are made of granite, and the creatures can only move through loose soil that covers the valley. As the group continues discussing, they suddenly hear Melvin screaming from outside. Upon inspection, they find him shit scared on a light pole. The town residents assume that Melvin is playing another prank and order him to get down right now. But this is when the creature suddenly appears from beneath. Panicked, everyone flees the area and rushes indoors. Despite making no noise or vibration, the creature hovers beneath the store where Rhonda and the others have taken shelter. When they closely listen for vibration that may have attracted the creature, they hear little Mindy hopping around on her pogo stick with headphones on. Friggin 90s, gonna get her killed. Sensing the imminent danger, Val makes a bold move. He runs out of his hiding place and grabs Mindy right before the creature devours her pogo stick. Nancy then grabs her daughter Mindy and runs towards their home, while the creature chases Val to his truck. In the meantime, another creature shows up and starts moving towards Earl and Rhonda, causing them to get separated. Earl runs back inside the store, while Rhonda rushes towards Melvin. However, she falls down and gets tangled in barbed wire. This forces Val to once again risk his own life. He grabs a pickaxe, wounds the creature, and frees her, after which they run to the store. Everyone then breathes a sigh of relief, assuming that they're safe here. But unfortunately, the store's fridge starts malfunctioning, making a lot of noise. A creature then emerges from beneath the cheap wooden floor and manages to grab one of the residents. The other monster also makes an appearance and forces the town dwellers to take shelter on the roof. They're safe here. This isn't the third movie yet, so those fuckers can't fly. The survivalist couple notices them on the roof and contacts them by radio. They inadvertently catch the attention of one of the creatures, which emerges through their wall. However, Bert and Heather are more than prepared for it, they spray the monster with bullets, eventually killing it. Now, only two of such creatures are remaining. The town dwellers celebrate Bert and Heather's heroism with cheers and claps, but their happiness is short-lived as the monsters get creative and start destroying the building's foundation, killing a few people in the process. Seeing them getting closer by the minute, Earl suggests that they use their bulldozer to escape. He assumes that the creatures won't be able to lift a 30-ton vehicle. Left with no other choice, the town citizens act on the plan, using a small tractor as a decoy. Val jumps from the roof and runs towards the bulldozer. However, after creating a distraction for a while, the tractor trips over, leaving Val stranded in the middle of nowhere. With the graboid now fast approaching, that's what they're called, Rhonda instructs him to stand still. She then creates another distraction by bursting open a pipe. The monsters take the bait and change their direction, allowing Val to safely get on the bulldozer. Without wasting any time, he then rescues all the remaining town residents, and they make their way 
out of the town. As they reach closer and closer to the mountains, the residents begin celebrating. However, their vehicle soon starts sinking, making them realize that the creatures outsmarted them and led them into a trap. The group then rushes to the nearby rocks, barely making it out alive. Now, with time running out for them, Earl comes up with a risky idea. He proposes they lure the creatures from the ground and blow them up using Bert's homemade bombs. Earl then ties a lit bomb onto a rope and tricks the creature into devouring it. Surprisingly, the plan works and the monster is blown into smithereens. After this, the group sets another trap for the last remaining creature. They throw a lit dynamite on the ground, which it quickly devours. However, this time the monster hurls the bomb back towards the group, making them scamper for their lives. In the ensuing chaos, Val, Earl, and Rhonda get separated from the others and they rush to find another rock to climb on. They are almost caught by the creature, but manage to deceive it by standing extremely still. At this pivotal moment, Val comes up with a risky idea. He runs up to the valley and the other two follow suit. They soon reach the end of a cliff and have nowhere to go. The creature has finally cornered them and it starts charging at them with great speed. Seeing this, Earl and Rhonda get out of the way, but Val continues waiting. He is the Hassan Al-Ghaib. He is going to ride this thing. <laughs> he eventually jumps away at the last second, causing the creature to fly off the cliff and land onto the sharp rocks below, causing its demise. The movie ends as the townspeople celebrate their victory over the creatures, while Val and Rhonda engage in a passionate kiss. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.